living below the poverty line. You know, the pitch rock, that's glocks, flip cop, but a black leader sit watch the blame that's for hip hop. This is about to happen. He's Timothy Taylor and he's about to do it again. Flow with East Breeze like when MCs don't got nothing for him. Whatever you need, I got that. You better believe I had that. Drop down and get jig along, shorty. F that this year rap thing's a hobby. I do it a little too good. Whatever your name, you bore me. You corny, your hood. The Hereafter represents a movement of activists and artists who are continually on a daily basis attempting to change the society in which we live in for the better. In other words, we are taking up the task of inventing the future for us. Ultimately, at the end of the day, they want love. But they're not tapping into the correct source for that love. Mm -hmm. So they're getting a false sense of power. Mm -hmm. Again, you don't have power if you don't have knowledge of self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if they define sexiness as a woman in a video, um, simply dressed or skimply dressed, then, and they define a sexy dude. Like, check it out. Videos and it's the beach. And you got sisters in bikinis and dudes on the beach with Timberlands. Yeah. In your yeah. case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hot in here. I'm, I'm in love with this. We're dealing with a beast that doesn't respect any law. You know, that's what we're obviously dealing with because we see the atrocities that's being committed um, uh, against indigenous and you know third world people, as they call them, all over the country, all over the planet. It's happening everywhere. These dudes don't have no respect for law. What you believe as far as uh, your religious view, you know what I mean, or whatever you want to call it, you know, regardless to what that is, you know, the common denominator is we're here in this place. You know, we're here in this place and we're um and we're oppressed together. Mm. You know, um at the end of the day we gotta understand the function of religion. We have to understand the function of cultural concepts. We have to understand the function of mythology. You know, I'm not a myth buster. You know, I spent a lot of time as a youth trying to determine what was real or what was false within a mythology. You know, I'm not even, I'm not a myth buster. If your mythology is sustaining and preserving your group, so be it. If your mythology is not sustaining and preserving your group, discard it. Because the function of a mythology is to sustain and preserve the people that adhere to that mythology. Like I say all the time, white supremacy is a mythology. But the people that are benefiting from that mythology don't care if it's not the truth or not. They don't care. They believe it because it's sustaining them. It's benefiting them to do so. That's the purpose and function of a mythology. You know, um, you go all around the world. Every ethnicity on this planet has their own mythology. You know, they have their mythologies, and those mythologies are designed to sustain them. Every life-sustaining institution in their countries and, and amongst their people and nations that they develop are for their sustenance and survival, and they're, and, that, and they're rooted in that mythology. That's why we can't prosper in this particular environment, because the life-sustaining institutions are based on a mythology designed to sustain white people. And it's called white supremacy. That's where we get the term white privilege from. Every institution in this country has white privilege at its root. So it's going to be hard for you to collectively rise in this type of environment unless you start building your own ethnicity. You know, when you develop some ethnic solidarity along cultural lines, you know, then you'll start to see yourself prosper, you know, and they wonder why the African Senate schools turn out children with such a high or such a high academic level, you know, because they're tapping in to a solidarity that has been, you know, basically mangled and discarded, you know, but that's your superpower. You know, it's like reconnecting to your olive tree, your 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 broken branch off the off of an olive tree, you know, and you just need to reconnect to that olive tree. You know, it's like a light bulb being taken out of the socket. You know, you look at the light bulb when it's plugged in, you're like, yo, that light bulb is bright. But if you screw that light bulb out of its source of power, that light bulb is meaningless. You know, and it doesn't matter how many watts the light bulb is. It can be a 25-watt light bulb or a 100-watt light bulb. 
but it's, it's nothing if it's disconnected from its source of power. And I think that we, you know, we've been disconnected from our source of power, which is rooted in our ethnicity. Hmm. Yes, indeed. You know, one of your famous and wonderful quotes, it's no longer smart to be dumb. So dealing with the cultivation and building back to our greatness, you know, expand on importance and the science of the Intelligent Seeds program. Why? The Intelligent Seeds, you know, is a program that was started by uh, Sister Stacy Muhammad and myself. Um, we started it to teach uh, urban youth, you know, um, black youth in general, you know, how to document and tell their own story. You know, um, it's like, you know, controlling. We're trying to show them how to control people's perception of them, you know, how to present their side of every story. Uh, so so what what's happened is the youth, you know, it's, it's like they're getting a, a, a full course and study in their environment, you know, and they're learning all types of things. I mean, terms like environmental racism, you know, something that you wouldn't even <laughs> think that I, you know, most of the urban youth be like, you know, what is that? You might have heard of racism, but environmental racism, you know, how, you know, your environment is intentionally polluted with with toxins that slow you mentally, you know, that impede you academically, you know, uh, like lead, manganese, chromium, six, all types of heavy metals that are uh, that are you know that our communities are inundated with. You know, we're we're making the youth aware of those things, you know, so they can start looking at crime, even looking at crime in, in a different from a different lens. You know, because if a kid has high lead levels in his blood, if his, you know, the lead level, if he had toxic levels of lead in his blood, you know, chances are, you know, it'll create violent behavior patterns, you know, and, and, and people, a lot of people don't notice. But uh, upwards of 70% of violent criminals from our communities had high, have high lead levels. So if we bring more attention to this, we'll start to see some of these crimes that are committed, you know, some of this uh, maladaptive behavior, they like to call it. But we will see some of this behavior as a health issue and not as a criminal issue that needs penalizing, but a health issue that needs medical attention, you know, and, um, you know, that that would help a lot, you know, but today it's like, you know, they're just locking kids up, throwing, throwing away the key. I mean, you are, your kid is in school, you know, your kid is like, you know, up and, you know, just not with the slow curriculum. You know, they, they'll say your kid is uh as ADHD or ADD, whatever they're calling it. I mean, they'll recommend your kid to special education or to give your kid some kind of drug like Ritalin or, you know, and it's like you're, <laughs> you're not diagnosing the right thing. You know, we're living in the communities where most of the homes were built before 1978 when the piping was lead and the paint on the walls was lead. You know, we're dealing with inner city communities like where I live, where it was heavy on factories. It was, this is one of the industrial centers of America in Trent, New Jersey. So the lead is in the soil now from from those factories. You know, uh, so when your kid is out playing baseball and sliding down down to the, to first to second first base or whatever, that dust may have high levels of lead in it. You know, and this might affect your child adversely, you know, academically and socially. And a lot of people don't understand that, you know, but um, that's what we're doing with Intelligent Seeds. It's, it's pretty much the focus has been environmental issues, you know. So um, we did a, it did a documentary called Dying to Learn, 
you know, about high lead levels in the public school system water in Trenton. You know, I mean, they had lead levels at 220 parts per billion. I mean, 220 parts per billion. Mm. The norm is 20 parts per billion. Mm. So, yeah, so now you get an idea of what, yeah, of what we're dealing with. That's retardation level lead in the water, you know, so, you know. So we, 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 we're going into that, you know what I mean? We're teaching the seeds about that, you know, and understanding poverty, what poverty does, how poverty is created, how it's exacerbated, how it's uh, shaped and maintained, you know, so that they can uh, address certain things from a, from a different perspective, like, you know, just like the prison industrial complex, you know, teaching them about that system and, and you know, what it's about, what it's predicated on, you know, um, and why these communities are targeted by law enforcement, you know, so, we, you know, they're, they're learning at the same time that they're being equipped with a, a life-sustaining skill that, you know, they can go off and have a career in, so, yeah. Indeed. You know, like you said, 85% of the people don't even have a clue on what's going on. they just going with the flow. And I like the verbiage that you use as far as crimes. You know, a lot of these things perpetuated against black people are indeed crimes. You know, I don't really see the people really understanding the totality and the atrocity of things that have came upon us, you know, all the way from, like you're saying, the high lead levels, all the way from the communities being positioned in high voltage power line areas. Um, all the way from, you know, people not being educated on canned goods and the type of um, effect you can have from eating preserved food over a period of time. Um, the brain damage that aluminum foil causes. Like, I mean, I could go on and on, the list goes on of the numerous things just like hidden in plain sight just right there in front of us. And it's to the point now where the people must be educated. Um, What's the time frame that you're looking at as far as that upcoming book that you write in the three-fifths of an MC, The Manufacturing of a Dumbed Down Rapper? Uh, I'm I'm trying to get that out uh, this spring. Well, spring 2011. Okay. Okay. And I see the fact that um, you never compromised your music, not since day one. You always came out with intelligent music, you know, very informative. So what's the importance of buying intelligent music and media in this current dumbed-down environment? I mean, it's like it's, it's like we used to call public enemy. I mean, the, uh, the CNN of black culture. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. hip hop is hip hop is that. You know, that's what hip hop is for me. You know, um that's what hip hop has been for me. You know, it's like uh you know, you go into school every day and they teaching you, you know, that uh that everything begins with Aristotle, Plato and Socrates, you know, and Europeans, you know, and then brothers some brothers like the ex clan come back and say come and say, Yo, hold up. I am an African. I don't wear Greek. I must have been reminded of a legendary thief who tried to make Greece in comparison to Egypt, but they got jipped in their minds when he quit. And then when you do the research on what he said, you realize that it was actual fact. You know, hip hop, hip hop was was one of those things that we're doing with intelligences. You know, giving the other side of the story. You know, so the importance of it is so that you'll get the side of the story from from where the people are standing. You know, as opposed to, like, for instance, when we get the news story, we get the police story from television. The the media always use the police story as the official story. So Mm -hmm. when they say, you know, they shot the guy because he had a gun, our story, we say, yo, no, wait a minute, he had a wallet. You know what I mean? So that's what hip-hop did. Hip-hop said, no, it was a wallet. You know, hip-hop says, you know, no Aristotle, Socrates, and Plato didn't father anything. You know, Egyptians did, you know, uh, 
when, when they say when we go to church, I mean <laughs> we go to church, they'd be like, you know, Ham was a you come from Ham and he was cursed and you know that's how you got black skin and so on and so forth. You know, hip hop said no. Shim was a black man from Africa. If you replete that back, they can't laugh at you. Being a descendant of Shim, which is a fact, means that Abraham, too, was black. KRS one, you must learn. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's what hip hop has always been for me. Hip hop has been our perspective, our take on a particular event. You know, because when you're living in a, in, a, in a culturally hegemonic society like this one, you know, it's like the event is not at the center. Europeans are at the, at the center. You know, so it's like when, when in reality, the event should be at the center and everyone affected by the event or weighing in on the event on the circle so that we can all chime in, you know, based on our history and experience as it pertains to that particular event. But the European has made himself the center of every event, you know, so nobody else's story can be heard. So hip hop for me is that so intelligent hip hop, conscious hip hop. You know, it's very important that you get it. You know, it's very important that you seek it out, not just conscious hip-hop, but film, conscious film and everything, because we got to understand and, and don't forget that the same thing that happened to hip-hop happened to black film. <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. at, the same time, at the same time, it's like, you know, we went from we went from, uh, from Do the Right Thing and, <laughs> and all of these <laughs> movies that were dealing with 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 thing with something of substance, you know, higher learning, you know, uh movies like that. Same time we shifted from that, we shifted from that to Minister Society and to uh what we have today, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, uh I Could Do Bad All By Myself. Wow. You know, and all the movies that criminalize black men even further, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 